Hi, I'm Jim with Sewing Machine Rehab, and in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the drop feed feature on a Singer 301. Maybe you didn't know it, but you can lower the feed dogs on your 301 so they come down all the way and they won't come up at all while you're sewing. That means that you can free motion quilt and darn on your 301. These machines are older, so sometimes that part gets a little stuck and it might be hard to adjust. I'm going to show you how it works, how to disassemble it and put it back together so it works flawlessly for you. Let's jump in and get started. So I'm going to show you how to do this with this 301 that I just finished restoring and it was also painted as you can see. What we want to do is look at the drop feed feature. So let me show you what that is. So on your 301, you have a little knob. It's right here to the left of the bobbin case and hook. Now, usually when the feed dogs are fully up, when you're operating the machine and the feed dogs are working in their fully raised position, this knob will be turned all the way to the right clockwise. To lower them, you would turn it to the left. And you'll see this machine, because I have restored it, this turns freely. A lot of times I hear Hear from you viewers that this part of your machine doesn't work or it's stuck and I have promised for a while to make a video on this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the feed dogs up all the way and we're just going to get a look at what happens when I spin this knob you will not see me turning the knob because I'll have this bed extension down but you will see the feed dogs raise and lower so right now the knob is turned all the way to the right as far as it will go. And you can see here the feed dogs are raised. When I turn that knob counterclockwise, do you see how they disappear under the needle plate? And even if I turn the hand wheel now, the feed dogs do not come up past the needle plate. This is how we can free motion quilt or darn on our machines. When I'm done with that, I just turn the knob back all the way to the right and the feed dogs come back up. I can turn my hand wheel and you can see them moving. So how does this work? And what do you do if you can't get your feed dogs to lower in your machine? So this is the underbelly of the 301. And in order to work on this part, you are going to want to lay it on its back and take off this bottom cover. So just take it off. And set this aside until we are done. This portion right here is the part of the machine that is dropping the feed dogs when you turn that little knob on the other side over here. If it is stuck, it's really hard to get oil on this. This is a long threaded screw and unfortunately it's not easy to get oil where you need it. So if this is frozen, the first thing that I would recommend trying is this. Here in the nose, this is the part that you're trying to get to turn. This is where a pair of non-marring pliers comes in handy. You can grab that knob and try to twist it with a pair of pliers first. Sometimes that will free it up. If that doesn't work, instead of trying to force it, this is the next thing you would do. Do you see this little nut right here? We want to loosen this nut. Now, I have a little wrench here. It is a 930 seconds, that's the size, that fits on this nut perfectly. What I recommend doing is putting a wrench on the nut and the way that it spins off is you're going to put the wrench on and then you're going to pull down and that's gonna free this nut up. The purpose of this nut is to keep this screw from coming out all the way when you are lowering the feed dog. So you see I took this nut off. Do you see this spinning here? Do you see that? That's how I can take this whole thing apart. So once you remove that nut, try again with your non-marring pliers on the end of that knob and see if you can get it to spin off and go ahead and take it all the way out. And this is a long screw. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you just have a little patience, turn it out, and here we go. This is the device that is actually helping you raise and lower your feed dogs. Now there are three parts to it plus a nut, so four parts total. This little part right here, will just slide right off, just like that. So if this has all been stuck, go ahead and oil up these threads before you do this next step. But what you're going to want to do is to get a screwdriver that will fit down in here. You'll look, there's a head of a screw right down in there. This is one long screw. And so <laughs> if you can get this turning left to get it out, you can go ahead and remove it all the way Check it out. I'm gripping it with the non-marring pliers and twisting this part with my fingers. It's a little bit easier than even using the screwdriver. Now, if this was really gunked up, which it shouldn't be too bad because it's always protected from lint between these two parts. So the thread shouldn't be too dirty, but if it wasn't spinning freely, run a wire brush over the threads that you can see and knock any gunk off that might help it spin off a little bit easier. There, <laughs> screw, and then this is the knob that you're turning. This is the other little portion and the nut. Now let's look here in the machine. Do you see this? This is what's actually moving to raise and lower your feed dogs when you turn that knob. So what I would do at this point is I would clean off all these parts, wipe them down with oil, clean them and crud cutter, whatever you like to do. Just get them clean before you reassemble them, really paying attention to the screw and cleaning the threads off. There is also a hole right here on the end that the screw's coming out where we took that nut off, clean that hole out and then clean inside this hole as well where this part nestles in. Now we can put it all back together. Now, as we slide this all back together, take note, this moves around a little bit. So this screw head's going to need to line up with a hole that's in this part. See, there are two different parts. So you may have to kind of move this back and forth to get everything to line up correctly when you're trying to thread the screw all the way in. But we'll start by screwing this screw back in. Now you're gonna to wanna to get it so it's just recessed inside the end here. Then you're going to take this part here with this little cone shape and you're just gonna slide it on like that. Make sure you oiled this too before you went too far. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go through the hole here on this end of the machine and you're going to slide it through the hole and line it up with that screw hole. And once you get it lined up, you should be able to turn the knob and that screw is going to start to catch here. Once you have it caught, like now it's caught, I'm going over to this end here. This is where I was turning to spin it all back together. And I'm going to start using my screwdriver to turn this screw. And I want to have it come out the other side do you see here? It's starting to come out the other side. So I'm gonna keep turning until more of this is exposed. The amount that I want coming out is roughly this. I want to be able to screw the nut back on and I'm going to want to be able to tighten it. And I'm going to want about one or two at the most of the threads on the end of the screw on this opposite side of the nut. So this isn't far enough. I'm gonna turn it a little bit further. Let's see how that looks. Spin my nut on. There we go. Do you see? There's just a tiny little bit sticking out here on the end. Just a very little bit. Now that's exactly the way I want it. I need to tighten this nut down because if I don't tighten it back down, when I turn this knob to raise and lower, it's just going to come all undone. So you're gonna use your wrench and you're going to use your screwdriver. Your screwdriver is going to go in the slot on the screw on the end here. Make sure you have it in the slot and keep the screw from turning. And you're going to use your wrench and you're going to tighten that nut by twisting up with your wrench. Don't let the screw turn. Once that's tight, I should be able to turn that knob on the end and you can see 
I don't know if you can see that. This is how we are lowering the feed dogs and it will go to a certain point and they'll be all the way down. And then when I'm ready to raise them back up, I'm turning the knob. So let me show you what this looks like on the top side now that I have put it back together. Here we go, feed dogs, they go up and down and the needle plate moving back and forth. Let me bring them all the way up. And I'm just gonna turn that knob counterclockwise now. And there they go, they've disappeared. I can turn my hand wheel. They don't come up out of the needle plate. And then turning the knob back clockwise all the way. There they are again. So that is how that drop feed feature works on your machine. And usually it's pretty easy to fix usually you can get it at least turning to begin with with a pair of non-marring pliers. If you don't have these regular pliers are fine, just put a piece of cloth or some thicker material in between your pliers and your little knob right here so you don't scratch this up. But what an awesome feature for a 301. Truly, I think it makes it a nice competitor to the featherweight, absolutely without a doubt. When you're all finished, put your bottom cover back on and you should be good to sew. I have promised this video for a while to several of you, so thank you for your patience. Hey, if you haven't yet, please give this video a like. That helps my little channel so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, please follow along for more content like this. Thank you guys for watching. Check out this beautiful 301 right here in my shop and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.